Woo. Hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? Feels like it's been a bit since I've done a whip and tap, but it's all good. Oh, man, tweezers. Oh my gosh. All right, but how's everybody doing? All right. All good. All right. So, I'll do a whipping chat here for a bit. It's a Treasure Studios art. Treasure Studios art canvas. All right. Night Horse by Polina Bivsheva, 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, square drill, mounted, mounted film adhesive. And uh, all that. Uh, 30 colors, just regular. Oh, excuse me, regular colors, no ABs, which stands for Aurora Borealis. Uh, it's just 30 regular uh, colors of drills. All right, so finished the bottom row. Uh, I posted that on my social media uh, a few days ago. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Pretty amazing so far. Just amazing. All right, so I'm gonna do some of the background. And then this is part of the horse's uh, like head like the lower part just here so but yeah basically working on background here this section's a little more compact and probably could do a bit more but I'll be okay alright some sort of blue out here I think it's number 10 uh, down Arrow. Okay, yeah, a few more of these. I think it was number 10. Looks about the same. Yep, number 10. Okay, we're good. Let's have a few more of this uh, number 10 here, this blue. And I uh, can uh, do a different color of blue or whatever we were into. to. There we go. Hope everybody's been well, having a good time. Yeah, I kind of slept for a bit yesterday to recover from, to kind of salvage uh, the day yesterday. And yeah, I just ended up doing other things instead of diamond painting, so all good. Okay. Yeah, can't really move too much. I'll be seeing a lot of my uh, diamond painting pen, I'm sure. But yeah, all good. Yeah, this is the first time I've like really diamond painted this week, so it's all good. Let's jump right in, have a good time, hang out, have a cup of coffee. Uh, watch the nature documentary about South America. The salt flats and all that. Where lithium comes from and borax and flamingos hang out and alpacas and llamas. Really cool. <laughs> the Andes and all that. Yeah, really like cool stuff. Really cool area. Really interesting hour. Documentary kind of thing. Here, my arm might be in the way for a minute here. Okay, there we go. Just kind of have my guide sheet here. I'm um, like number 10. Okay, yeah. Really the best position, but it's all good. Yeah, I see that like salt, that that massive plane of salt and salt plains or whatever it was called, and you get that like uh, as above, so below picture where 
the mountains in the background are reflected by rainwater or whatever on the salt beds there. Yeah, I've seen that picture like thousands of times. That's where that's from. It's just like thousands of kilometers, square kilometers of salt, dried up salt. It pretty cool. And then once water gets on it, it like reflects so well. It's amazing. It's a beautiful picture every time. <laughs> As above, so below, I think is yeah what comes. Yeah, it's just such stark contrast, like beautiful blue skies and white or clear waters. It's just wow. And beautiful greens. And some of the, yeah, South America, I think, yeah. Yeah, where the Andes are, yeah. Yeah, there's like llamas, flamingos, uh, cousins of the emu. Yeah, pretty cool documentary. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. Um, before that was like an ocean documentary, like without plankton, like all life on earth would just be obliterated because of the food chain. Yeah, just, wow. So like little tiny microscopic plankton, if they were like to be eradicated, if anything happened to the plankton on planet earth, that all life would just be decimated. Wow. So, nice little microscopic uh, life form is supporting technically the. I don't know, supporting pillar of all life on Earth. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, BBC Earth. Uh, that's BBC Earth for you. Oh, awesome. It's a channel we have, and when we've. When we're sick and tired of the news flip, like we get our fix of the news for a cycle or two. But yeah, we can only watch it like so much. So we go, we usually all flip to BBC Earth and watch a documentary or two, go to South America or deep in the ocean or just around the world, just sitting on your couch, <laughs> not having to worry about COVID or any other newsworthy events, stabbings, and yeah, it's just, don't need a passport to watch uh, BBC Earth, I can tell you that, yeah, sometimes get the odd space documentary too, like uh, galaxies and stuff. Those are a little more far-fetched, because, yeah. You can, like, have gathered information from, yeah, satellites and stuff, but, yeah. Just technically really can't be, like, out there in space. Turn that light off. Yeah. Glares nasty from this angle. I don't know. Space stuff is really cool, like galaxies and stuff, like planets. Yeah, it's neat, but it's like we don't know everything a hundred percent. I don't think we ever will. In our generation, anyway. Pretty sure. Pretty sure space is going to be figured out in like a couple millenniums beyond our lifetime, but yeah, well, stuff's kind of cool and really pretty to look at. And like, yeah, I'll say that safely. 
don't know what to do about this. Too bright, and yeah, I'm just having a hard time seeing the down arrows here. The lights is helping actually. It's tricky. There's not too much glare. There, move the lamp a bit. Just need that little bit of light. <laughs> Help me see what I'm doing here. Just to counteract the glare that's coming through the lines here. There we go. We're good. Yeah, had a rough shift the other day. What could go wrong went wrong. So I uh, just bared my way through it. Got it somewhat functioning for the day shift to come in. Oh, well, that I just tell my supervisor that I had a crappy shift and document what happened. And sometimes beyond my control. But it's okay. Oh, maybe the supervisor is like terrified that I, I'm gonna or like rage quit or something because I had a horrible night. Horrible shift. No, not. Not really. I can get all upset and freak out, but it's not really gonna fix the problem at all. <laughs> I just freak out while I'm trying to fix the problem. Because that night, I'm basically alone in my department, so I have enough training to be able to fix a problem like be able to get the line running again but sometimes it takes time to fix such things and yeah the supervisor understands that like you're you may end up having to shut down for a reason so just do it safely and Try to get it back up and running again as soon as you can. That's basically all it is. And yeah, I just communicate with everybody if there's a problem with the line. Since I'm passing it to a coworker for them to keep it running. Yeah, it it's just communication there. You let everybody know what's going on then there's an understanding and nobody's gonna be like blindsided by the line suddenly acting up and like nobody said anything no I don't like doing that to people no <laughs> line's supposed to run but yeah stuff breaks down like it runs like almost 24 7 like minus like cleaning it for product changeover it runs for long periods of time. And eventually, yeah, something's gonna give out. It's normal. Sorry, I was just swigging some coffee there. All right, just chugging coffee as usual. Oh, geez. <laughs> so, yeah all good I documented and then communicate any problems like two or three times depending on the severity if it was just a couple like product line jam ups no big deal but if it causes me to shut down like if I have to shut down the whole line then yeah it's communicated to my supervisor but he doesn't freak out it's like it's just better to mention that kind of stuff like just like I'm mean, gonna find out Either way, just blatantly. And I can, like, comfortably mention that kind of stuff, and I'm not going to get freaked out at it. Like, oh, sorry he had a bad night. What happened? And it's like, okay. <laughs> just, uh, here's what you can do to kind of alleviate 
the annoyance factor. Yeah, try doing this, or this, and then, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, raw egg, yeah, it's not a good idea. Like, it's better that the line's running and the egg's not sitting there. Yeah, it, yeah, it's better if the line's running, so the egg stays refrigerated in the silo, or cooled in the silo, is drawn from the silo, but then is immediately uh, dried, dehydrated, and uh, packed in a temperature controlled environment so moisture doesn't get reintroduced into the product once it is packaged. But stuff happens and yeah, you can still get a bad product if uh, something's not quite right. But yeah, we try to prevent that. Yeah. Stuff does happen and yeah. Yeah, communication is just major. And I knew that right from the get go. Like if something's wrong, just get somebody, talk to somebody and get the problem figured out. I probably mentioned this like a couple times in other weapon chats, but yeah, communication is paramount in like any situation. You're regardless what you're doing in the building there. Just so everybody's on the same page or knows what's going on. It's just a lot easier. It's just so the place is continuously running, functioning as a whole, and it's more efficient. That's basically what it is. Yeah, it's nice when the line's down for cleaning, because you don't have to worry about uh, just making sure the line's running. Just gotta get the CIP going, which is fairly straightforward. And then you can uh, tidy up when you couldn't because the line was running. Yes, yeah. Uh, hopefully I don't have another problem with uh, the adhesive again. Yeah, there was a patch on the bottom row that I had to get baby oil for to kind of bring the sticky back and it seems to have worked. I had a heck of a time trying to find baby wipes. Like that was suggested in uh, Facebook groups to bring the sticky back if uh, in the adhesive. But I just used baby oil and a bit of, like a piece of paper towel to bring the sticky back. It worked, I guess. I didn't use very much baby oil. Like I have a whole container of it now, but baby wipes, I'm like, they sell those anymore? It's like, yikes. Here I am in like the diaper aisle. I don't have a child at all, just looking for like baby oil, an infant or <laughs> another father at all. <laughs> oh, I'm just knew where baby oil was, like, makes the most sense to me, but... Oh, excuse me. Oh, boy. No, it's all good. Well, baby oil's just gotta be as good as baby wipes, so... I just didn't want to get too carried away. They put a safety seal on, like, the opening of the baby oil and it's like just basically like a little tiny pinhole so yeah I guess you don't have to use very much of the baby oil it's just that size a certain size of a container to last you a while I suppose so yeah. I will have probably have tons of baby oil around for a while it's just I get in the habit of uh resting my hand on the canvas 
fully knowing that there's adhesive there, but like just it never fails. Like my hand just like I like resting my hand <laughs> on surfaces. I kind of like put the baby oil on the piece of paper towel and like just dabbed it on the canvas that wasn't part of the canvas that wasn't sticky anymore. And yeah, and some of the tackiness came back. Like the drills are still there, like stuck on there. So it must have done something. Oh, it's all good. I don't know. It's what was suggested in the Facebook groups if uh, canvas isn't so sticky, a part of a canvas has lost its tackiness, the adhesives, adhesive had worn out or whatever. And I'm sure that there's like product, some sort of adhesive product they can apply to the canvas. I've seen it. They can like put on the canvas to give you a spot of adhesion as well. So. Yeah, I just rested my hand too many times on that one spot. And the adhesive just uh, gave out. That's what happened there. Like, the adhesive is really good, but yeah, just overexposure to uh, my oily, oily skin. Yeah, just kind of dampered down the effectiveness of the adhesive. All good. It happens. Yeah, it's a bummer. But That happened to the Deadpool canvas, canvas that I worked on for my nephew. Yeah, they were... Yeah, I think I did the same thing. And I did baby oil too. But I think I applied too much baby oil to certain spots. So, he was a little slippery. Yeah, it's all good. That stuff happens. Learn to kind of adapt. <laughs> all right. Yeah, there's just a few more of these down arrows. But yeah, it's nice to come out here in diamond paint and after a couple days of work and sleeping during the day. So I'm on days again next next week. Like this is my last uh, week on uh, nights. I switch back to days, so it's a little nicer. It the rotation just goes by so quick, you know. It's like, it doesn't bother me at all. I just naturally adjust. I'm a night owl in the first place, so. Sleeping during the day when I have to work, it's just a natural reflex at this point. Just like, okay, I have to go on nights, so I'll just stay up late this night, and then I'm set. Yeah, it's just so natural now. Oh, probably not easy for other people, but yeah. All right, I'll do capital Y next. How are we doing? Okay. Yeah, it's basically gonna be blues. <laughs> yeah, this is background here, so. See a lot of blue in this canvas, for sure. Okay, a capital Y, what's that? Uh, 11, okay, cool. Yeah. Another shade of blue. Yeah, there's tons of Y in this. This part, anyway. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Number 11 and capital Y. Yep. That 
That's right. Cool. All right. Yeah, I was on social media yesterday, just looking at uh, completed canvases and all that. Uh, seeing the beast a lot, that beast canvas from DAC, uh, where he's holding the rose in the container, the enchanted rose. Yeah, it's a really cool canvas. And somebody has some of the princesses. Like the princess and the frog and Belle and yeah, Jasmine and all that. Yeah, have those hanging up on their stairwell. Uh, really nice. Framed and all that. Well, magnetic clip frame or something. Really nice. <laughs> yeah, just beautiful pieces that people are completing. A uh, couple chalk pinsons are. People finished a couple chalk pinsons. Okay, number 11, Y, okay. Okay, a lighter blue here. Yeah, I, I just love seeing canvases being worked on and completed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm usually one who just peruses the news feed and goes into the groups. Like uh, Facebook groups for uh, diamond painting. And, yeah, Crafters Anonymous with uh, Rachel Ray and uh, Miss Coffee. Yeah, it's probably like one of the major uh, diamond painting groups that I kind of hang out in. <laughs> I myself don't necessarily post in the groups anymore. I comment and like pictures because I have my own Facebook uh, business page and Instagram. So I just post my progress pictures there, which I'll mention at the end of the whipping chat as always. But yeah, I don't really post to the groups that I'm in anymore. So oh, I just feel like I'm spamming <laughs> at that point. No, oh, well, no beef with any of the groups or anything. It's just I just have that Facebook business page now, so it's just where I post and Instagram. So it's just easier. Instead <laughs> of posting to like four different groups, just kind of post for the channel kind of thing. Oh, it's all good. I heard Facebook went down the other day, and people freaked. Yeah, it's probably not the first time it's gone down. Yeah, it probably ruins a lot of people's days, though. Yeah, Twitch went had a data breach or something the other day, too, or yesterday or something. Yeah. I know a few live streamers, and yeah, that that's not thrilling when you can't broadcast. And you have the perfect opportunity to do so, and uh, the website doesn't work. Yeah, that that's frustrating. I've run into that. Yeah. Times where I could broadcast on Twitch, and then, yeah, the site's not working, or internet went to garble, or uh, game systems were updating. So it's like... Yeah, when you want to do one thing and, uh, yeah, the world does another completely. Yeah, it's just like, uh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, well, C-L-O-V. Can you do, really? It's just one of the, another one of those things that are just beyond your control. Yeah frustrating but it's like what can you do it's like it, it's doing what it's doing <laughs> whether anybody likes it or not it's a bummer though now 
I don't know what I'm gonna do with my game systems. Like, you know, like just boxed up. I just got so frustrated with uh, games updating constantly and the systems updating constantly. And then they just want you to get the next generation of consoles, so there's like. They may very well be slowing down the previous generation consoles. That could be a, that probably just speculation, but yeah, I don't know, hundred percent sure. But yeah, when you put in a game disc, and then you have to wait like five or six hours for an update to download for like a new game, because they just update games with patches or finish games with patches patch installs that like anybody remember super mario six mario 64 for like the uh, nintendo 64 the complete game was on there like you just put the cartridge in and then you play the whole game it's like hey this is fantastic and then move on with your life these days they kind of put a game out like the skeleton of it give you a, a bit to play with and then they just update it finish the game as they go through like patch updates no <laughs> i no that you're spending like hundreds if not thousands of dollars on these games and game systems and they can't even complete games like finish games for release these days it's ridiculous yes content updates are different but if you're buying like an $80 game and the main core component of the game isn't complete or finished yet there there's a problem like that bugs me. <laughs> that really makes me want to crawl up a wall and scream. So, yeah. Now, PC games are probably the same thing. There's probably patch updates. I can understand World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy online. I think it's 14 online. Like, those update constantly. That's their massive multiplayer online P RPGs. That That's the point. It, the worlds evolve. Yeah. Content is added Normal. in patches. That just keeps the game fluent and improves things. It's just an ever-evolving world. That That's completely fine. Like, that's different. But hyping up a game... And having to buy more content to kind of make the story in a storyline in a game make sense? No. That's just... What the heck? You should be getting a, a complete game and then extras, like, downloaded or updated, not major storylines or plot lines that were meant to be in the game after hyping it for like nearly a decade or so. No. If you're going to make an RPG or something, a game with a major storyline, put the whole story in it. If you need to work on the game for a bit longer, I'd rather spend money on a complete game than having to buy DLC later to get more of a story which should have been there in the first place just yikes I'm pretty sure I griped about this before dude yeah eh, this is why I'm like diamond painting and meditating and uh, yeah why my game systems are just in their boxes and I have unopened games that I bought, meaning to play, but 
yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> yeah, I was just so into gaming and then it just took like a couple things just to set me off. <laughs> like, that's it. One day I just unplugged everything and just boxed them up. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I probably mentioned that a bit back. I'd love to get a PC and, like, do a VR chat kind of stuff, like virtual reality. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Get a really good PC and uh, yeah, do VR stuff, but... Yeah, game consoles, I'm just not... Mm. It's kind of on the fence, or... At the very most, not really caring about new games that are coming out on the consoles and all that. I just totally was detracted of any interest <laughs> for that stuff. I have a friend of mine that just loves video games and is telling me about new games that are out, what he enjoys. I just, yeah. I'm unfazed by it, but yeah, if they're happy or excited about a game, that's, yeah, their passion, yeah. I'm fine with that. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> no way involved in the <laughs> in gaming right now. Oh, sure. I miss Final Fantasy XIV. Like, I really didn't get too used to it. I created a character a couple times, and it's just, yeah. That's a lot of work. That's <laughs> uh, a lot of... Oh, excuse me. That's a lot of screen time. And, yeah, I used to be one of those gamers that games for hours. And for the games that I played, like Final Fantasy VII, like RPGs, you have to be there for a few hours to accomplish anything. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean the original Final Fantasy VII, like the four, three disc... Uh, PlayStation title, not this whatever heck monstrosity, monstrosity this PS4, PS5 thing is. The uh, remake, huh? I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, we're gonna release it in parts. Huh? What? No, oh, no, I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, just trying to be something else entirely. Uh, Final Fantasy VII is the PlayStation version when it first came out. I don't care how polygonic it was, it was the first... 3D Final Fantasy, I believe. Literally. They made the jump to 3D. It wasn't fantastic, but at the time it was revolutionary. 1997, I believe. When it came out. Yeah, first jump to 3D. Uh, uh, character models. And then, yeah, they're beautiful now. The character models are just incredible now. Like, They've made serious strides, but yeah, just remaking Final Fantasy, yeah, it's just trying to be something that it's not, and having to wait like three or four years for, to be able to play like a, another part of the story of the game that you could just like fly through all three discs 
on the PlayStation version. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, uh, just, uh, just handing stuff in these days, just, uh, shaking my head. Mm. I'm sure Cyberpunk Punk 2077, I think I have the right title, That that's a game that's naturally going to keep updating, because it's like a thriving world, cyberpunk world, that's a game that will naturally update and improve. Well, half the time it's games, like improving, like polishing games, but there's like a complete story <laughs> in Cyberpunk, like you could play through the entire storyline, I'm pretty sure you have a complete game, but it's just like a different activities I guess that you can do with your I don't know too much about cyberpunk but yeah I've seen it it's beautiful looking but yeah I yeah you're a character and you can mod you're like probably half android or something and you can modify your body various upgrades as you go I think that's how it goes yeah cyberpunk yeah Cool concept, kind of Grand Theft Auto in the future, kind of a very, yeah, free roam kind of concept, I think. Is it in first person view? I don't know. Cyberpunk. I must be thinking like Skyrim or something. I think it's third person view. But yeah, it, Cyberpunk 2077 is like on PC and... Yeah, console. It had a cross-platform uh, launch. I think it's better on PC, like just for it. Probably a highly CPU demanding kind of game. CPT, uh, CPU heavy resource use. So I'm sure you can crank up the graphics have really good graphics card and yeah basically see the skin cells of all the characters <laughs> uh, I'm sure yeah I saw it on the store shelf I was in EB or er, GameStop yeah it's not EB games anymore so it's GameStop now or something Yeah, I, that's the first time I've walked into a game a gaming store in like a couple of years now. <laughs> so, yeah, I was looking for a couple a Steam gift card, and there they were. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't hate video games, like, never will, but just, I don't play, play them. I'll still see, like, posts and clips of uh, games and all that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But it, it's interesting, but I'm not, like, soaked in it. <laughs> I just, I don't have a controller in my hand like I used to. Uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know, I just kind of shifted away from it. Yeah, it happens. I'm glad I found diamond painting, so, and meditation, so. I had pangs of anxiety, I probably still do, and meditation helped that. Yeah, it's just. I uh, just needed to make a change. Just needed to shift out of uh, kind of the fixed path I was in with gaming. It's just a cycle of frustration or just, yeah. 
I don't know, I have other responsibilities besides uh, sitting in front of a TV screen. I have a full-time job and that. And, yeah, I can really sit in front of a TV screen to play a game for hours anymore at this point anyway. So, yeah, I kind of shifted out of that. Yeah, I still probably look at my phone screen uh, probably as much as uh, I would be gaming. So, yeah, I guess one habit switched, kind of swapped with another to a different degree. But Oh, excuse me. Ooh. Yeah, I, I can safely admit that, yeah. I probably have a fixation with my cell phone. Yeah. But at work, I'm kind of... I have my phone off and in my locker. So I, I don't play with my smartphone at work. Nah. Just... If I'm, if I'm at home, yeah. And have my phone and be listening to YouTube music or... Facebook, Instagram, yeah, posting on social media, just checking out what's going on. Yeah. At home. Yeah, that's different. Not at work. Yeah, probably people who have their cell phones out at work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the Wi-Fi password for the works Wi-Fi, so I'm not even going to bother. I can look at my phone here at home, eventually. It, I've had it off for a couple days before, like, while I'm working nights. Like, there are days where I haven't turned it on for a couple days. And I'm fine with that. If somebody needs to get in touch with me, they'll find a way. I have a laptop and I don't remember the last time I turned that on. It's just the cell phone's just like there and it don't have to wait for the laptop to start up. You can be on the internet within like a couple minutes minute or two. It's just so much more efficient. Or convenient. This makes it so easily easy to get distracted. Yeah, good idea, bad idea kind of scenario, but you can accomplish a lot more in a shorter amount of time. That's probably like our constant driven goal: faster devices, faster technology, quicker reaction time. Just so we can like cram something else into our like chaotic days. Yeah, it's just convenience having it right meow. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, I think the same thing. I get driven into the same mindset. Yeah, uh, not immune to that kind of ideology. Yeah, I want to have stuff in a reasonable amount of time, like new music or, yeah, a new diamond painting kit. We just want stuff like right now. <laughs> I have to have it like right now. <laughs> and then when you finally have it, it's like, okay, what else can I get? <laughs> it's just our attention just like shifts. Uh, I I felt that way sometimes. It's like, just uh, the hype of just having a new kit that you just want, or craft item, or whatever new game system, etc. It's just the hype and excitement of getting something like that, and then you have it, and it's like, okay, what can I go for now? Yeah, it, it's weird. It's like a, some sort of obsession or just locked in hardwired habit <laughs> just 
that impulse to buy, impulse to just obtain stuff. I don't know, it's just human nature, I guess. But yeah, man, I suffer from. Yeah. <laughs> Times where I've like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have bought this canvas when I could have been uh, paying for something else <laughs> a little more important. Yeah, I've done that a couple times. It's like, yeah, crap. Oh, well. I've bought duplicate canvases before. I think I bought, like, Seabury's Trail uh, twice by accident. Not realizing. I I was lucky enough to give it to, like, a friend of mine. So, yeah. I was able to give that kit away. And I ordered... Uh, a second space for reflection for a co-worker or a previous co-worker yeah for their aunt or whatever so yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> sea breeze trail like the duplicate was like just kind of like Ooh, yeah, I don't think I have that one yet. But totally blanking that I did actually have that canvas. And yeah, just gets in the mail, and then lo and behold, I set it beside the other sea breeze trail that I already have, and I just like slightly die inside. Um, oh, I have this one already. Whoops. Mm. I think eventually I wrote down what I have for canvases somewhere. I think, yeah. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a crafting journal or anything. Oh, I'm okay with screwing up this adhesive on the side here. On the frame of the canvas, but... Yeah. Now, yeah, I'm an impulse buyer. And yeah, diamond paintings, yeah, kind of like a core aspect or new music CD. Yeah, I still have a CD player in my car, so yeah. New music, I can listen to it like just by taking a CD out to my car. Yeah, it's. I get bored of the radio. Yeah, just hearing the same Justin Bieber song all the time. When there's like how many thousands of different songs out there. Yeah, drawback of top 40 radio. Uh, it's like, yeah, I want to listen to this artist. Good. <laughs> I want to listen to something different. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's okay to just want to spoil yourself every once in a while. Nothing wrong with that. Just, yeah, if you're on a budget, yeah. Just kind of just double check with yourself before you're just buying like a dozen diamond paintings. Or a few diamond paintings. Like, just kind <laughs> of... Just do a double check before you hit uh, the checkout. Buy now. Yeah, if you're on a budget. Nothing wrong with being on a budget. Being responsible. Yeah, just... I don't know, treat yourself every once in a while though. Like, just don't be... Nope, can't buy that, period. No, bad. No. If you have a little bit of extra money left over, yeah. Get something nice for yourself, for your significant other. Just because. <laughs> yeah, treat yourself. Don't. Yeah, you don't have to put all your money away. 
This, if you can get your bills paid or whatever your situation is, yeah, take care of that first. And then, yeah, if you have a little bit of money left over, there's the canvas you wanted or craft item you want. Yeah, just get, just get like one of them or whatever. And then, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, treat yourself. Yeah, get a new book or something. Yeah. <laughs> get that nice little extra cup of coffee or tea. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta enjoy life a little. Like, come on. Be so hard on yourself. Mm. Yeah, uh probably safe to say that I've splurged a lot more times than uh, I've actually had a rational maybe I shouldn't buy this right now kind of feeling yeah kind of feeling of uh, if I don't do this now I probably won't be able to do this for a while so I'll just kind of take the leap yeah, let's do it yeah, yeah, sometimes I've regretted it, but whoopsies. What can you do? Life goes on. Mm. Nice loud truck moving stuff. Oh, uh, there's the Facebook post just her town that I lived in there's like a town community kind of Facebook page and yeah there's transport trucks that supply uh, cement materials or transport cement uh, and food and yeah we're surrounded by fields like farm fields so gravity bins and all that trucks to transport yeah and people just complain that trucks are too noisy driving through the main street in town well yeah i'm uh, kind of connected to main highways yeah transport trucks really shouldn't be going through downtown because the roads just aren't wide enough to compensate a truck turning but they still do it's just basically a shortcut to the main highways outside of town but uh, people just yeah complain about <laughs> the noise and it's like you moved here from wherever you came from and you're didn't do research or anything like what our industries are cement yeah we have an industrial sector for what's left of it yeah I mean we have some manufacturing outside of town or in town uh, pet toys cement is major it's been around for decades uh, food yeah, uh, car parts and dashboards and stuff, I think. Uh, some sort of metal working. Yeah. It's like you didn't know this just coming from a big city like Toronto or whatever. You're moving here to get away from the expensive high cost of rent or mortgages. And now you're complaining that it's like too noisy and stuff and it's like oh boy I think those people just get kind of funny comments <laughs> it's like uh, move then <laughs> move back to where he came from it's basically hmm. yeah I live we live by a highway here and yeah we have truck traffic but it's like a major highway to Stratford and London, Ontario. Yeah, we're going to have traffic noise. I do mention that on my whip and chats. But yeah, 
Got to live by a highway, so we have high volume of transport trucks and that. I don't know, it's life out here. Not in town, but uh, we're still technically at St. Mary's address, but we're on the highway outside of town, so it's like, yeah. But anyways, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, in the description below, I have my social media, uh, my personal Facebook page, just basically my profile name, uh, my Facebook Echoes of Color, Facebook business Echoes of Color page, yeah, and uh, my Instagram tag, so all three are just basically updates of uh, progress on my coloring if I finish a coloring page which I'm yeah not heavy on on the channel but it, it's there seldomly uh, yeah and progress on this canvas or any other canvas I'm working on just progress pictures updates if any come out up so yeah other than that have a great day I'll get this uh, posted and yeah, see you around. Take care. <laughs> yeah.